All right, and good afternoon. I'd like to welcome and introduce Dr. Robert Murphy, Executive Director of the Robert J. Havey, MD Institute for Global Health and the John Philip Fair Professor of Infectious Diseases here at Northwestern Steinberg School of Medicine, who answers your COVID questions every Tuesday and Thursday here on the Havey Institute for Global Health's Facebook page. And today, Dr. Murphy will be answering viewer submitted questions and addressing the latest COVID headline news through today, the 7th of December. And we invite you to continue to submit your questions to us via Facebook at NU Institute for Global Health or by email at globalhealthinstitute at northwestern.edu. And leading the discussion again today is Sophie Buskowski, who is a student research assistant with the Institute. So Sophie, I now turn it over to you. Thank you, Kristen. Hi, Dr. Murphy. Uh, good morning. So for some updated COVID statistics, we are seeing a pretty strong rise on COVID cases in the United States. Yesterday, there were 197,000 new COVID cases that were found in the states. The seven-day average is roughly 110,000 cases per day. And we are still seeing under 60% of the population fully vaccinated. Hospitalization and deaths have both increased. And unfortunately, unfortunately in Illinois, we saw one of the record number of new cases with 18,831 yesterday. In Illinois, 61% of the population is fully vaccinated, and there has been roughly a seven-day average of about 7,000 cases per day. What can you tell us about what we're finding in Illinois with these new variants and Delta and the holidays, et cetera? Yeah, well, the U.S. Uh, pandemic is still being driven by uh, the Delta variant. Um, the uh, Omicron uh, variant, the new one, uh, has taken over pretty much South Africa, is basically now pretty much all over the world. It's in the United States in many states, uh, but it's still a relatively small percentage. Whether it takes over is actually a really good question. Um, because in South Africa, when they had the uh, increase in the Omicron, they were down at a very low level, so there wasn't much competition. Whereas here, there's so much Delta being transmitted, it's got to compete against uh, the Delta. So uh, we'll find out very soon because if the numbers take off, uh, that just proves that, that the Omicron is much more contagious, which we suspect, and will soon take over around the world. So as you just mentioned, you know, the COVID cases are still being driven by Delta. What, can, what more can you tell us about the surge that we're seeing still in Delta cases and with Omicron following? Yeah, no, it's disturbing because uh, there's so many cases, you know, it's basically kind of as predicted as the weather got colder, people moved indoors, uh, many people uh, in uh, many areas, uh, many counties in particular, because that's uh, how we uh, track a lot of these cases, you know, not wearing the masks and, uh, and gathering together in groups with people that are vaccinated and unvaccinated, and that's just all, all spreading it. So, you know, um, <clears throat> there, uh, it depends on the state you're from as to what the mitigations uh, really are. New York is being very aggressive. It's making the companies uh, mandate vaccines. That's likely to end up in the courts. <clears throat> Here in Chicago, they're not going to mandate. They're going to, uh, Mayor Lightfoot is uh, trying to convince people to voluntarily do it, for the companies to voluntarily do it. Um, She's not being uh, really strict enough with that, but uh, you know we'll see what happens with these cases and if that's going to change. Yeah, and for our second COVID headline that ties pretty closely into this, the new U.S. travel rules. What you need to know about the changes prompted by Omicron. What can you tell us about travel changing internationally? For the United well, <clears throat> the the U.S. is um, now uh, mandating that people coming into the U.S. get uh, vaccinated the day before. So the, the difference is they're not saying 24 hours because that caused a lot of problems um, with, uh, with people. Say they had an evening flight, you know, to get a test within 24 hours was actually very difficult. Um, so they're, uh, they're just saying anytime the day before. So that, I think that's a, a reasonable uh, compromise. But this Amazing. is the wave of the future. Yeah, definitely. And now for some COVID questions. Mm -hmm. My daughter and I have tickets to a concert. They require proof of vaccine as well as masks. We are both fully vaccinated. We both have had breakthrough cases of COVID in early October, had been six months from our vaccines. We have not been boosted as yet, and we are still waiting until the 90 day mark after having COVID. I'm still very nervous about attending this concert as many people will be eating, drinking, and unmasking. Do you think it's safe for them to attend? 
Yeah, they're vaccinated and then they had COVID, which is somewhat akin to getting a vaccine, although the response to um, COVID is typically not as strong or predictable uh, as a vaccine dose. But they sound like they're probably pretty uh, immunized. Uh, they are, they can't technically, they can receive a booster because they're six months from the vaccine. So the only um, hard and fast recommendation is that you wait six months from your vaccine. If you have COVID in the middle, you just wait till your symptoms gone, you can take the vaccine. Uh, however, many people do wait two or three months uh, after they've had COVID because we don't start seeing the breakthroughs uh, with COVID uh, in the first three months after people have been sick. And then we do start seeing it. So uh, they're low risk. Uh, they can probably do okay. But then the other um, catch here is that the, the Omicron variant uh, very easily breaks through um, the people who've had Delta. So most people have, had, these people most likely have had Delta. So what would be the best thing to do? Uh, I'm not sure when the concert is, but the best thing would be to get a, get a booster and get an mRNA booster, though that looks uh, very promising, uh, no matter what they had before, whether they had the J&J, &J, Pfizer, Moderna, just getting either the Pfizer or Moderna booster would probably uh, make them even more protected. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Now for the second question. This person is vaccinated and boosted, but their friend is in, the friend says that she had COVID, so she isn't worried about getting it again. Can a person get COVID multiple times if they're vaccinated or unvaccinated? And could they keep getting it? Yeah. Yeah, this question uh, has been answered multiple times. It comes up all the time. People think that they've had COVID, they're not going to get it again. This is just not true. Uh, they can start getting COVID uh, again after about three months. Uh, and the the uh, immunity one gets from actually having COVID disease, having the infection, active infection with symptoms and stuff, uh, the immunity varies so widely. Some people get a lot of protection, some people get almost no protection. So it's just simply not true that COVID uh, will protect this person who's unvaccinated. They need to be vaccinated. And we call those people hybrid people that have had COVID and then get vaccinated because they actually have a better response to the vaccine. Um, so uh, th that person will do very well if they get vaccinated, but it's simply not true what they said. Wonderful. And now for our third question. A month or so ago, you said there was only one antigen test that detects if any antigens arose from a natural infection and not from the vaccine. What is the name of the test and where could this be done? Uh, first of all, it's not an antigen test. It's an antibody test. Now, the vaccines induce the spike protein in your body makes antibody against spike. So it's a spike antibody. There's another, the nucleocapsid also uh, uh, causes an immunologic reaction and you can get an antibody to the nucleocapsid. Uh, so there are commercial antibodies that are strictly nucleocapsid antibodies. So if this person really wants to know whether they had COVID in the past, they would have to get a nucleocapsid antibody and they are commercially available. Um, I, you would have to ask the laboratory where you're going, what the antibody test is. If it's spike protein, that only tells you if you had the vaccine. If it's spike and nucleocapsid, that's not gonna help you either. Uh, but if it's just nucleocapsid, it will tell you whether you had um, uh, COVID in the past. So it's an antibody test and you have to ask around uh, and the laboratories generally, I would say, you know, the commercial ones are just saying antibody, antibody. They're not necessarily uh, telling you which one, but if you drill down, you can find out. Yeah, definitely. And now for our fourth question. You said a breakthrough case is like a half dose of a vaccine. You also said that a booster would not be needed until your six months was up. How should one measure the six months from time of vaccination or from time of infection? Yeah, it's uh, for the... that. Part's easy. It's six months from the time of vaccination. Uh, like we said before, if you get a breakthrough case in the middle, you still stick to the regular, uh, the booster schedule. Um, so take it six months from your second dose of the, of the uh, original vaccine. Uh, as far as a half dose of vaccine, that's an approximation. Uh, and I base that just on the fact that people that have had COVID start breaking through on their own, start having second infections 
uh, after, in about three months, we start to see that. Whereas with a vaccine, uh, you usually don't lose that power until about six months. So three, three is half of six, but I mean, that's just a gross approximation. It is not as good as getting the vaccine. Okay. And now for our last question, are there any studies that have done that have done to support that the virus is like a half booster or is your opinion based on other bi viruses behaviors in general? If the latter is a six months, a conservative estimate, I know you covered this a little bit, but can you talk a little bit more about boosters and half dose and how that looks? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's really is just an estimate. It's just not as good as a vaccine. See, the vaccine is a measured dose. It's in an adjuvant that presents itself to the body uh, in, in a package that's very easily recognized by the immune system. It's not an actual virus. So the virus evades in some cases um, and uh, basically hides from the immune system. And so some people don't have uh, a big response and sometimes the inoculum, that's the amount of virus that actually you were exposed to is so low that the, uh, there doesn't mount a big response whereas really sick people in the hospital have a lot of virus typically and they mount a better response. Um, so there's many factors that go into uh, the immunologic response after you have COVID. So anyway, the, but the answer is really the same. The, um, the vaccine produces a stronger, stronger and more predictable immunologic response than actual infection. Infection gives you a response, but it's unpredictable and it's typically less than what happens with the vaccine. Wonderful. Those are all of our COVID questions for today. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. Okay. See you Thursday.